Hi guys, in this video, I will explain the stages of the cardiac cycle. But first, I will give you an overview of the heart's anatomy and electrical activity. So the heart is composed of two atriums and two ventricles. Here we see the right atrium. Here we see the left atrium. And beneath the atriums, we see the ventricles. This is the right ventricle. And this is the left ventricle. And we can see that the left ventricle is more muscular than the right ventricle. And that is because it has to pump blood uh, to longer distances than the right ventricle. Now let's take a look at blood flow. The right side of the heart, as we see here, is depicted in blue, is because it's receiving deoxygenated blood from the superior vena cava as well as the inferior vena cava. Once the blood from the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava reaches the right atrium, it is then emptied into the right ventricle. But before it does, it must pass through this valve known as the right atrioventricular valve. Also known as tricuspid valve. When the right ventricle is filled with the blood coming in from the right atrium, it ejects the blood out into the pulmonary trunk by the opening of the pulmonary valve The blood then goes out through the pulmonary arteries. These here are the left pulmonary arteries. And these are the right pulmonary arteries. Therefore, both the right and left pulmonary arteries send the blood back to the lungs to be reoxygenated again. Now for the left side of the heart, we see that it's colored in red, and that is because it's receiving oxygenated blood through the pulmonary veins. These here are the left pulmonary veins, and these are known as the right pulmonary veins. The blood from the pulmonary veins is flowing into the left atrium, which will later flow into the left ventricle, However, this valve, known as the left atrioventricular valve, must first open before the blood can flow through. This valve is also known as the bicuspid valve. When the blood from the left atrium fills in the left ventricle, the left ventricle then pumps the blood through the major artery known as the aorta. This is done by the opening of this valve known as the aortic valve. Also, as we can see, the aorta branches into smaller arteries. These smaller arteries deliver blood to the upper body while the larger artery delivers blood to the lower body. At this point, you may be wondering, where does the heart obtain a stimulus for blood pumping? The answer is autorhythmicity. Autorhythmicity is the ability of the heart to generate its own rhythm and contract by itself. In other words, it can generate its own action potentials that trigger contraction without any external stimuli. 
I will now explain the electrical conduction system of the heart. The heart consists of five important autorhythmic fibers, which are fibers that spontaneously generate action potentials. This includes the SA node, which is also known as the pacemaker of the heart. There is also the AV node, which is relatively close to the AV bundle located on the septum. The AV bundle runs down the septum and splits into the left and right bundle branch. The left and right bundle branch then run down to the apex of the heart and further branch into what are known as the Purkinje fibers. These Purkinje fibers spread throughout the heart of the wall. Altogether, these five autorhythmic fibers help with the depolarization of the heart. It first begins with the SA node, which helps transmit the signal across both atriums through gap junctions. And it also helps transmit the signal to the AV node. The AV node then transmits the signal to the AV bundle. And the AV bundle transmits the signal to the bundle branches, which then runs down to the Purkinje fibers. So again, it first starts off with the SA node, then the AV node, next the AV bundle, followed by the bundle branches. And lastly, the Purkinje fibers. Now that we have a better understanding of the heart's anatomy and electrical activity, let's take a look at the cardiac cycle. It is worth mentioning that the heart is a double pump, meaning that at the same time that the right side of the heart is pumping deoxygenated blood to the lungs, the left side of the heart is pumping rich oxygenated blood throughout the body. There are five phases in the cardiac cycle. The first one is called passive ventricular filling. During this phase, the ventricles are receiving blood from the veins. which directly flows into the ventricles. At this point, the atriums have a higher pressure than the ventricles. And therefore, at this point, only the AV valves are open, while the semilunar valves remain shut. And that is because the ventricles don't have a pressure high enough to open them. Also, we can see passive ventricular filling on the EKG at the first plateau phase. It is important to mention that 80% of the blood flows in during passive ventricular filling, while the other 20% flows in during the second phase known as atrial contraction. So during atrial contraction, we see the atriums contract. And that is to pump the remaining 20% of blood. So if this is 80%, the remaining 20% is pumped into the ventricles. And now the ventricles are fully filled. 
But before the atriums contract, the atriums must be depolarized, and that is shown by the P wave on the EKG. Also, as far as pressure, the pressure in the atriums is still higher than the ventricles since they're contracting. And the AV valves are still the only valves that remain open, and that is because the ventricles still don't have a pressure high enough to open the semilunar valves. Also, on the EKG, we can see atrial contraction on the second plateau phase. The next phase is called isovolumetric ventricular contraction. At this phase, neither the atriums nor the ventricles contract. This is actually the beginning of ventricular depolarization. And there is a buildup of pressure in the ventricles, which causes a backflow of blood leading to the closing of the AV valves. So as we can see here, both the AV valves and the semilunar valves are closed. This phase is shown within the QRS complex of the EKG. It is actually the R peak. The next stage, as mentioned previously, is ventricular systole. Systole meaning contraction. In this case, the pressure is the greatest in the ventricles since they are contracting. This causes the AV valves to remain closed, but leading the semilunar valves to open. This is because the ventricular pressure exceeds the pressure found in the pulmonary trunk on the left side and the pressure um, on the aorta on the right side. Therefore, this phase causes the ejection of the blood through the arteries. Also, ventricular contraction is shown on the EKG by the plateau phase after the QRS complex. The last phase of the cardiac cycle is known as isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. At this stage, the pressure in the arteries remains greater than in the ventricles, and the black flow of the blood causes the closing of the semilunar valves. Therefore, just like an isovolumetric ventricular contraction, both the AV valves and semilunar valves are closed. An isovolumetric relaxation is shown within the T wave of the EKG. The T wave represents ventricular repolarization. Now let's do a quick recap of the cardiac cycle. The first phase is passive ventricular filling. This is where 80% of the blood in the atriums enters the ventricles. The second phase is atrial contraction, where the remaining 20% of the blood in the atriums is pumped into the ventricles. The third phase is isovolumetric relaxation, where both the AV valves and semilunar valves are closed and the ventricles are being depolarized. The fourth phase is ventricular contraction, where the blood is ejected from the ventricles into the arteries. And the last phase is isovolumetric relaxation, where both the AV valves and semilunar valves are closed, and also the pressure in the ventricles starts to decrease and the pressure in the atrium starts to rise to begin the next cycle. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.